So welcome back to another FIFA 21 video. Yesterday EA revealed FIFA 21 Ultimate Team and today we're going to have the recap video. I'm going to be taking a look at the trailer scene if we can find anything new and also doing the main highlights out of the pitch notes that EA released as well. We've got icons to talk about as well and that's pretty much it. If you do enjoy today's video remember to leave a like. To get all the latest FIFA 21 news and content make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to get to 200,000 by the end of the year so please help me out by subscribing today. Today's video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is the best app to get all the latest football news and live updates. They've got a new and improved app and they want you to try it out. It's cleaner, simpler and smarter than ever. Now this app is the only football app I've got on my phone because it covers everything. So if you want to try it out for yourself make sure you use my link in the description you can download it for free. So let's talk about the trailer. EA yesterday released on YouTube the FIFA 21 Ultimate Team trailer and I think it's time to break it down a little bit to see what's new. So we start off with some clips, some uh, Zoom, Skype calls, whatever you want to call it. But first off, we've already seen the new layout for the Ultimate Team. This is going to be the new menus for FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. We'll talk about this in the pitch notes section, but you've got some friends there. Uh, squad Battles, Companion App, the thing at the top that never changes. But you've got a new navigation bar at the bottom. And you've also got a thing which lets you get to stadium and squad with the L stick up and down. And the next thing they're introducing is foot co-op. So you can play with another person in foot now. Uh, is it foot or foot? I don't know. I say foot. This is the lobby screen obviously. And they've gone with this little stadium background feature as well that I noticed. I like it. You know, I always spoke about FIFA 16 stadium background feature. It's better than just having a splash color screen and nothing else to it. So I don't mind this. But you've got Squad Battles, Division Rivals and Friendlies. Those are the modes you can do with the co-op. And this should ultimately be a better experience if you want to have fun with friends on Ultimate Team. Now this is another thing called Foot Stadium and this is incredible. Like this is something that we need in career mode. I'm sure you've seen it but I'll talk about it here and also in the pitch notes. A lot of customization features. This is like a stadium that EA gives you and you can go to three different tiers I believe. So you start off with a lower class stadium and then you work your way up to all of this stuff as you play the mode. So you've got like mad tifos that take up the whole section, some little ones on the corners there. This is really, really nice. The goal nets are different, the pyro in the back. There's a lot of other cool stuff to this as well. We'll talk about it later. Uh, there's also this thing, Team Harlem vs Team Joao Felix. I think you can join a team and get rewards and stuff. And foot co-op is what they're introducing here. That's also another shot at the stadium. You know that new foot creator stadium, whatever it's called. It's not creator stadium, but it's sort of similar. Here's another look at the menus. As you can see, squad battles, all the other things at the bottom there. The store is right there. Keep going. You can invite a friend now. And this is basically the foot co-op screen. You've got you and your buddy there. Choose your kits. You can see the latency. And then you can go into a match of division rivals and stuff. Here's a bit of gameplay here. And as you can see already, you know, the yellow lines. So it's not white lines, it's yellow lines. And everyone is going to have the option to change the color of the lines in Ultimate Team if you really want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to do it. But also the net looks a bit bluey. So maybe you can change the color there. Let's move on to some other interesting stuff. All right, here's the co-op objectives. So with co-op, you're going to have objectives like you do with single player. And you can play with a mate and unlock all these, get some rewards. The next thing they're introducing is foot events. And this is basically community stuff like Team Harlem vs. Felix. There's also other events here that you can join up and do, I guess. There's also Meaningful Moments, which is basically something about the cards or something where they can increase different attributes on a player. So rather than do a whole thing, they just increase the free kick accuracy or something. I think the pitch notes talks about this. There's also Core Mode Improvements. As you can see there, pink lines and the green net. So there's going to be a lot of customization to your foot stadium. And Mbappe looks pretty happy there. Here's the pyro that goes off when you score. Look at that. You can see all that. That's pretty cool. This is the stuff we need in Career Mode as well, where you can add these little elements I'm not saying change the color of the lines and the nets and stuff, but even pyro in the back would be pretty cool. There's also this stuff. Man, this looks like a huge stadium, honestly. I wonder how big this stadium is. It looks huge, but uh, here's the layout of the menus again. And here's a new stats menu as well. So it looks like a list and you can basically quickly see some of the player stats, you know, the ratings, also the weak foot, the skill moves, the height, the predominant foot, all that kind of stuff. And then there's also this uh, augmented reality thing with the lineups now as well. So instead of having just like a, a screen that comes up or something, you can have these cards that pop up. Got another shot of the foot stadium. And this is basically where they talk about it more. And this can be customized the way you want it. There's going to be different ways. I think this is the first tier of that stadium. So you start with this and you work your way up to that big one. This could be tier two or something. I don't know, tier three maybe. And uh, there's some other clips there. You can see you could put like mad club logos, flags, all that kind of stuff. And this is basically where you can do a lot of customization. So you've got the stadium base paint, which is white. Another base paint there. I'm not really sure how it's going to work, but I think you would unlock these. There's also the trophy stuff that you can put. 
So you can have like a goat if you want, Halloween stuff, tombstones if you want to, you know, be like the Undertaker, want to do a buried alive match or something. There's a statue in the game. And then you've got walkout anthems as well that you can add into FIFA 21 Ultimate Team for this foot stadium. There's the pyro going off again, white lines. Got some more trophies and stuff. So this is one of the biggest selling points for Ultimate Team this year, this foot stadium stuff. Hopefully it is good. And now we talk about the icons, the foot 100. Now there's going to be a lot coming from FIFA 20, but there's going to be a few additions here. You've got Torres there. You've got Cantona, Philip Lahm, I believe that is, and Schweinsteiger. You've got Nemanja Vidic as well, and uh, Philip Lahm there. Xavi, forgot about him. Eto as well. But as you can see, not too bad. I think a lot of the people that play Ultimate Team are pretty happy with this stuff. For me, I'm not really an Ultimate Team player. More of a squad battles guy just to get the background footage for the videos. I could see how this could be pretty fun if you have a mate that you want to play with in co-op mode. And you love this stadium feature that they're introducing as well. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good, but obviously I'm waiting for the career mode news. So that's the trailer done and dusted. Let's take a look at the pitch notes. Now this is a big pitch notes once again. So what I'm going to do is cut it down a little bit, just telling you the most important things, not reading it, you know, word by word. So let's start with foot co-op, which is what they're starting with. They say we've added a new friends widget to the game, which is accessible through most of the FIFA Ultimate Team by simply hitting R2 or RT. From this widget, you can select a friend to play a game with and be taken straight to the co-op lobby. So here is a look at the menu. We saw this in the trailer already. You've got your squad battles, but this is what they're talking about. You hit your R2 and you can invite some friends. This is another shot from the trailer as well. You know, you've got your three guys there. I'm not sure what the third guy's doing. Is that like the friends you can invite or something? I don't know. Uh, I think you can only play with a teammate though, so I don't know why there's three guys. But anyway, continuing on with the co-op stuff, let's talk about co-op squad battles and division rivals. It says, in squad battles, we've had a limit to the number of games that you can play that counted towards your weekly score, referred to throughout this section as a scored match. In Foot 21, we'll also be bringing a similar cap to division rivals. When opting to play co-op in squad battles and division rivals, both players will use one of their scored weekly matches. Based on the result of the game, each participant will earn their weekly score and coins for the match using the regular in-game calculations. With each game counting towards your number of scored matches, playing well together will be an important factor for both of your success. For division rivals specifically, matchmaking will be done using the highest skill rating of the duo. So if the host is in division 9 and the guest is in division 5, players will be matched at the highest skill rating of division 5 using our existing matchmaking for division rivals. So yeah, if your friend's really good, you're going to be playing in like the higher divisions, even if you're in Division 9 or something. For those who are wondering how this will impact your skill ranking as a lower ranked player who's winning in co-op with their friend, your progression in rivals will be similar to if you were playing games against players at your own level. So while you still rise, co-op will not serve as a major accelerator to your ranking. So you can't sort of cheat with a good friend as well and go up the ranks. Another consideration that we've made is for players who don't want to play against co-op pairs in rivals, we've included a toggle that lets you choose between a mix of solo players and co-op groups in your matches or just versus solo players. So as you can see here, you can change the matchmaking to play against solo or co-op opponents or just play against solo. And then we move on to some co-op friendlies. It says in friendlies, you can pair up to play together and using in-game matchmaking, find people to play any of our base friendlies experiences. Classic mystery ball swaps, king of the hill, blah, blah, blah. The matches will follow the rule set chosen and rewards will be the same as playing friendly solo. This is a great way to try out some new player combinations, teams, or just to work on your team play in a risk-free friendly environment. Now we move on to some foot events. Playing together won't only take place on the pitch in head-to-head -head gameplay. In foot events, you can collaborate and compete by completing objectives in-game to unlock rewards as a community. This year, we're bringing two new types of events to objectives. So you've got community events, and they say with community events, each player who completes objectives in specified groups will contribute to a global pool. As the pool of XP grows, the community will progress towards thresholds that unlock rewards for everyone who's completed at least one objective in the event. So yeah, it's pretty much everyone is gaining XP and it's going into this pool and once you reach the total you can unlock all these things. There's also team events so you can do Team Harland or Team Joao Felix. Basically you pick a side and you have to complete certain objectives and stuff and then you get rewards. So let's talk about some foot stadium stuff. It says for foot 21 we've built the foot stadium to be the most customizable arena in the game. Designed from the ground up, Foot Stadium grows alongside your club with new customization options that enable you to craft an environment which truly represents your club and one that can take on a range of different looks. So this is a T1, I believe, of the stadium, and this is game engine image from next-gen consoles as well. 
Doesn't really look too different, but we'll see what happens. You'll start Ultimate Team by unlocking the Foot Stadium, a modern design inspired by many of the world's greatest grounds. Foot Stadium will be the first home for your newly created football club. So this is what you're going to start with. To begin with, you'll have the ability to customize your team's badge, ball, kits, default celebration, tifo, stadium theme, crowd chants, and base paint color for your stadium. As you continue to play and complete milestone objectives, you'll unlock new locations for tifos, commentary club names, sound and visual goal effects, and space to show off the trophies you've earned this year. And I believe this photo is tier two of the stadium, so you can see the difference, T1, and then T2 right there, a few extra elements. It says, with the Foot Challenger Stadium expansion, your stadium will grow in capacity, giving you even more ways to customize with additional placement options in your stadium for tifos and trophies, as well as some new ways to customize with mo patterns and goal paint. As your club continues to grow and you complete objectives across Ultimate Team, you will find yourself ready to upgrade again to the Foot Champion Stadium. And this is the default stadium to play all Foot Champions matches in. It says the new Foot Stadium has been paired with a new way to customize your grounds in the menus. You can quickly access customization by pressing up from any top level menu to get directly into the customization screen. In this space, you'll have control over the look of your stadium, so you can quickly edit your stadium design and see in real time how it will look in game, as the stadium will also serve as your background in the menus. Okay, so they've got stadium background. So here's a look at the images. I'm sorry if this keeps getting in the way, but uh, this is basically one of the menus. So you can do match day, crowd, sidelines, and structure. This is the customization screen. This would be nice in crew mode, you know, create a stadium, you have all these things. Even upgrading existing ones would be pretty cool. Here's the trophy stuff that you can put in the ground. You can also customize a few different things as well, different kinds of trophies in different parts of the stadium. But you might be wondering, what happens if I don't want to use the foot stadium? What if I want to use the old Trafford stadium or something like that? Well, have no fear because if you don't want to customize, you can actually pick the licensed stadiums and it'll be exactly like FIFA 20 at the moment. Here's a look at some extra photos here. Just some extra tifos and stuff based on the clubs. We've sort of seen these in the trailer. Now we've got some core competitive modes improvements. And we're going to start with division rivals placements through squad battles plus promotion coin rewards. In Foot 21, one of the things we're looking to create is a friendlier path that squad battles players can take when they're ready to transition from a single player experience to online play in division rivals. This year you will have an alternative placement method to help you find your level in division rivals. The first 30 matches played in squad battles will factor the difficulty you play at and the results of your games into your placement division. Another addition to rivals is new coin rewards for promotion. Each time that you reach a new division in rivals, it's now more rewarding through a one-time coin reward that is added to your club immediately upon promotion. So you get promoted, you get a coin bonus. Let's talk about Division Rivals Weekly Match Cap plus new tiers next. It says, as mentioned earlier, another change that we're implementing this year is a cap on the number of games that will contribute to the weekly score accumulation in Division Rivals. Now, after completing your first 30 games of Rivals, the matches will stop adding to your weekly score. Through this change, players who play Rivals more than 30 times a week can continue to make progress against objectives, earn higher skill ratings and climb to new divisions, but they won't make it harder for players with tighter play schedules to compete in the weekly leaderboard through their continued play. And that's just a screen showing you that you have four matches remaining in Rivals. Division Rivals is now going to feature six ranks instead of five as well to split players a bit more, making their results and weekly matches a slightly higher factor in where they finish in the competition. In terms of expanded top leaderboards, instead of a top 100, they're now going to a top 200. And Live Foot Friendlies is up next and they say they're combining squad rules with the different house rules in friendlies to create fun and diverse new ways to play that will be active for a limited time. So this seems to be like a casual mode and sometimes they'll have like limited time objectives where you have to complete the requirements and stuff, but it's basically showcasing the house rules, you know, kick off, mystery ball, max chemistry. It's just something to play for fun. Now for meaningful moments, they say in Foot 21, We've built out a new feature that will allow certain special items such as moments items to better reflect the real world footballing moments they are based on. As an example, if Alexander Arnold was to receive a moments item to celebrate him as a dead ball specialist in previous games, his passing would increase to raise his free kick accuracy stat. In Foot 21, we will be able to raise his free kick accuracy to new heights without also impacting his short and long passing to better reflect his on-pitch abilities in foot. And now we have updated game menus as well. We've done a major overhaul to the design of the menus for Foot 21 and we really simplified the organization while giving quick access to some of the key parts of the game. So that's pretty much what your menu screen is going to look like. Much, much different to what we've seen already. Hopefully they did change the menus for career mode as well to give it just a new look. But you've got your main navigation bar, a few extra little things there 
and your stadium background. Now EA says the menus have been divided into two key information points and one navigation bar. The first information point is the large window on the left in the image above, which will be used to deliver contextual information about foot based on the space you're currently highlighting. The second smaller window on the right will deliver information about anything that's going on in the world of foot. So you can see the difference in the tiles there. The navigation bar has been greatly simplified with news, objectives, play, transfers, store, and more options. Now we've got a clip of the menus here. This is what it's going to look like basically when you're playing the game in real time. And in this clip, you can see that they've enabled quicker access to squad and customization in the game. From anywhere in the top level menu, you will be able to hold up or down on the controller and quickly access these two areas, which is what the clip is showing. In the squad menus, we've added a new list view toggle when scanning players. This view can help you quickly compare the players on screen to find the right fit for your needs. We've also extended the functionality of the radial menu to more places in the club, allowing for faster shortcuts to action on your players as you navigate. Here's a quick look at the transfer market menus. Not much has changed in terms of the settings, but the color scheme and the stadium background is there. When you select take me there from an objective, we've added a pop out that you can toggle to serve as a quick reminder of the objective requirements you're trying to complete. So if you're looking for objectives, it'll come up there if you press L3 and it gives you a reminder, you know, what you need to buy. Now, one of the biggest pieces of news for Ultimate Team is that they've removed fitness and training items. In an effort to streamline the systems in the game, we've decided for different reasons to remove both fitness and training items in Foot 21. All players in Ultimate Team 21 will start every game at full fitness, so you don't have to top up anything in terms of fitness anymore. Training items were also a legacy staple in the game, allowing the application of stat boosts to players for a single game, and this mechanic was not something that was being used in the game by the vast majority of players, so we've decided rather than to continue with this feature and give people items in packs that they're not using to remove it and simplify the space in game. As a result of these two changes, we've also removed fitness, training and healing related staff items from the game. We've also taken the opportunity to simplify healing items. In Foot 21, healing items will no longer be targeted at specific injuries. There will only be two healing items in the game, gold common and gold rare items. These will be applicable to any injury type and will reduce the injury duration by two matches and five matches respectively. Packs in Ultimate Team have been rebalanced around these changes and we've added a suite of new licensed club customization options from club tifos and stadium themes for a range of major clubs in foot to the already available kits and badges that you currently find in packs. To help better realize your customization vision, we're also going to slightly increase the frequency of chemistry styles to help you customize the effects of chemistry more readily to your liking. And for next gen, you guys know that you can uh, buy the game on PS4 and carry over your club, your coins and all that stuff to the PS5 and it works the same with the Xbox as well. But these are the new icons coming to Ultimate Team. We've got Eric Cantona, we've got Peter Cech, we've got Ashley Cole, we've got Samuel Eto, we've got Philip Lahm, Puskas as well. Bastian Schweinsteiger, Davor Sukur, Fernando Torres, Nemanja Vidic, and Xavi. So that was your FIFA 21 Ultimate Team reveal. Let me know what you think. And I think career mode is up next. If everything goes to plan, it should be out on the 13th of August. So by Friday, we should have a career mode recap going up on the channel. So make sure you sub up today if you haven't already to get all the latest FIFA stuff. In the meantime, if you need something else to watch, make sure you check out this FIFA video. Hit the card in the middle. It'll take you right there. I'll see you next time.